Hi, Aquarius. <sighs> Welcome to your reading. I just had a power outage for like an hour. And to be honest, I feel like it resets something. Because as soon as I sat down to do your reading, my landlord finally got here because it was such a long walk from his apartment next door to reset it. And then as I turned it on, he went, is it on? And my sister went, yep. So riddle me that. Riddle me how that timing just worked. This is what I'm saying, Aquarius. We are jamming a lot of like right now, which makes sense. I'm double Aquarius, sun and moon. Excuse me. Why are you making so much noise? The kitty's out being mischievous. I don't know if you just saw him, but he's down here right now. He's playing under my chair. <laughs> what are you doing? Look at him. He's like, oh, he is a monkey. Okay. He's a monkey. Did you just fall? Yeah. Yeah, you fell. I know. I heard. And he talks. I don't know if you just heard him respond, but he answers my question. What are you doing? You're crazy. He's like the sweetest, most beautiful kitten in the entire world. I, I can't believe he's in my house right now. Okay. Aquarius, the world. I told you, man, something got shut off and rebooted for you. Okay. <clears throat> like, can you tell me I'm not magical as fuck? The fucking star card. You just showed up. The third card. With the daughter of cups I could cry but I'm not going to what are you doing crazy man I am however getting a little chilly because again I haven't had any heat for an hour what are you doing I know you want to jump up there but you please don't please don't please are you going to I think you are you're going to try and jump up on me aren't you come on come here Oh, he wants to look out the window. That's mine. You can't have that. Look out the window. I know my phone is there because I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do a reading. Okay. You go on that side. I'll go on this side. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> you got to work with the people around you. You know, you just, Oh, look. How did that come down? Did you get this card for me, handsome? How did this come down? Did you get this card? What happened? Are you going to go see? I know. Are you going to jump down? Or are you just going to fuck with my altar? No, you can't go in there. All right. Oh, you flipped another card. Good boy. Now we have the hangman. Look at Hunter. <laughs> I'm calling him Hunter now. His name is actually not... <gasps> No, 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 don't do that. 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 Okay, go see Courtney. Come on. Mischievous, Mr. Mischievous. There. Okay. All right, that's dealt with. Okay. Sorry if you just saw my ass, too. I'm going to have to rewash that because... I just have a feeling somebody might have saw my butt cheeks. <laughs> oh God. I'm really, I'm going I'm to have to watch this video now. And see. Oh, all the distractions. That is life, right? Okay. So handsome pulls out the hangman and the star. Like, look at this. This whole reading has been run by majors, the world, the star, the sun, and the hangman. So I feel like, uh, the hangman and the daughter of cups now are sitting together. So I think that, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that somebody's healing time is over. Okay. Um, temperance is here now too. Oh my gosh. Look, so temperance showed up and the two of cups showed up and then there's judgment. It's actually a really pretty card. So I would like you to see it. See, look at that pretty card all rising up to the dove. And then there's the six of cups. 
And then look at that. We got the chariot, cancer energy. And then we got the father of cups with this ace of pentacles, <gasps> ace of swords, ace of wands. Oh my God. Okay. Five of pentacles. Okay. Five of pentacles. Oh yeah. Five of pentacles, six of pentacles. So something's changing. Okay. Um, like it's, it's okay. So the world is coming down to shut a cycle off. So then these three aces can come in. Okay. So this ace of pentacles, ace of swords and ace of wands can come in for you. Okay. So all three of these aces are like sitting in limbo right now. Okay. And they're about to get delivered by this world to this star. Okay. So, um, the sun comes out because it's like, you know how the, the star shines in, I'm way off center. Okay. The sun shines the brightest in the dark, right? But the sun it's like now you flip. It's like you're not going to be shining in the dark anymore. You're going to be shining in the light now. Whatever that makes sense to somebody. Okay. Uh, and then something from the past comes back. It's like something is ignited with these roots. Something's happening in your roots. <gasps> now I'm getting depth over distance by Ben Howard. I'm a huge Ben Howard fan, but... Ben Howard in the early days, okay? His first and second album, which I believe is Kingdom something and Burr Island is a part of that. Um, his second album, I really enjoy. I haven't listened to Ben Howard in a really long time, but there's this song called Depth Over Distance. And it's one of my favorite songs in the entire world. It's not just my favorite Ben Howard song. It's in general, my favorite song, basically in the world, because what, what he's talking about is that he was in a relationship and all he asked for was depth over distance. That's all he asked. He just asked that you, if, if, if you're going to feel a certain way, then just get in deep with somebody. You know what I mean? Instead of distance yourself, because so many people are used to distancing themselves because it's like, they don't know their own feelings or they won't talk about their own feelings because it's like so many of us were raised to not talk about things. We're not, we're not supposed to talk about things because you're just supposed to sweep them under the rug and continue on with your life. And I kind of broke free from that kind of pattern right? Because I was like, why am I going to keep sweeping things under the rug that have everything to do with my life and stopping my life just to make people in my family feel better? Why would they feel better with me hiding the truth about myself? Why would that make them feel better? Right? And it's usually because people enable people. So a lot of, a lot of husbands. Okay. And I'm going to say this because it's a lot of husbands. Okay. Are, are mainly guilty of it, but I'm not going to say wives are not guilty of it either, but enabling their spouse to act like a fucking idiot just to pass the time, just to not cause a fight. You know, right. And, and I'm talking fucking, you know, these people are so irrational. These people are narcissists at this point, right? They're using things and they're, they're attacking people and then husbands and wives, they just back up. They let the other one take the rain. They, they let the other one run the bullshit because they just don't want to deal with it anymore. It's like, people don't want to deal with people. Well, guess what? They're in your fucking life. You have to deal with them, right? This isn't like, I hate people are so lazy, right? They don't want to get into fights. And sometimes fights are what break the energy, right? You have to, and I'm not talking fist fight. I'm talking, you've got to break energy with people sometimes. Sometimes when you hold on to all this shit, you pe you pent up all this energy, you end up taking it out on so many other people because you won't just tell the truth to the one person that you're supposed to tell the truth to, but you won't because you're too scared, right? You're either too scared to get into a fight with them. You're too scared that you're going to say something that you're going to regret. Well, guess what? Maybe you got to say something that you're going to end up regretting, right? Because you've been holding it inside this whole time that maybe it's not going to be regrettable. Maybe it's going to be this thing that the, the one thing that saves your relationship is by saying the elephant in the room, right? So in order for these three aces to come through, it's like somebody goes from hanging in this like energy where I don't know if people are telling you, you have to heal or that healing is best. And I know you're confused about why you're standing still. And it's like, it's breaking somebody because somebody has got all this potential to grow. Well, I feel like somebody else is telling them that they have to hang in this energy, this healing energy that's so confusing to them, which is why it's not working. Right. You realize that this is the seven of, of cups, but it's in reverse. So that 
that one cup in the middle there that's yours is sunny side up right? But they're trying to say that you need this healing energy. You need to sit in this energy and you need to think about what you did and you need to get over this and you need to seek a therapist and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that you don't have to, but what I'm saying is what I'm seeing is, is that you've left this cup for yourself and there's the ace of cups. So all four aces showed up. Like they really actually did. So you, I have got to say Aquarius are balanced as fuck. Okay. Five of wands in reverse. Um, I feel like you didn't fight off this, this, um, section of healing. Okay. I feel like you didn't fight it off. Okay. Eight of wands in reverse with a daughter of swords. You just sat there. Okay. Um, you could have even found out fucked up shit and you just kept your mouth shut because you watched. This was a time where somebody had, and they were able to watch what other people were doing without engaging in it. Okay. And that kind of energy pisses people off. Because they, for one, if you're looking at them, then they think automatically that you're judging them, right? When they're the ones judging themselves, if they feel like they're being judged by another person that just happens to be gazing at them, okay? Just because someone's looking at you doesn't mean they're judging you. And if they are judging you, it doesn't mean that it's a bad judgment, right? It's all about what you think on the inside. So it's like, I feel like somebody had this like long kind of long hour of power. Remember that stupid fucking show, okay? But this was like the hour power of your life. Okay. And you put, you just stopped fighting it. You're like, you know what? If you want me wrapped up in this shit, if you want me healing so bad, then fine. Fuck it. I'm going to love myself way more than you. And I'm just going to go and do it because, you know, and like when I was coming out about, um, what my stepfather did to me and stuff. And like my aunt was so condescending. And by the end of it, she told me, like, I thought my father, my stepfather was going to come at me with a shotgun because he has numerous shotguns in his house and he's often threatened me. So when I finally released that he was the pedophile in my life and that he hurt me when I was a child, my first, um, my first reaction was, okay, he's going to come at me with a gun. I know he is because he's told me to keep my mouth quiet for 30 years. And now I'm not keeping my mouth quiet anymore. Okay. So I immediately felt threatened by his energy and thought, okay, well, he's going to come at me. So I called my aunt and I was like, listen, you know, can you just let me know? Like if, if Craig just decides to take off and, and drive and like pay me a little visit. And then she fucking broke down and she was like, I can't handle this. I have my own issues. You want it. You need therapy. You need help. You know how many people, when I said, when I came out about my stepfather told me that I needed therapy and in such a condescending way, like you need therapy as if they didn't believe me. They were just telling me I needed therapy as if the real truth was going to come out. Like what other truth? was going to come out. Did these people actually think that I was saying something in order to get attention? Right. It's like, they all watch that Robin Williams fucking movie, the night listener, you know, they all watched that and they all just called me some fucking, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what you would call that lady. I think she's just fucking psychotic to be honest, but some people, um, they feel unworthy in this world and they make up lies. Okay. About, about themselves or about their family. Some people will feel sorry for them. Right. And they know that they're doing it, but they get addicted to the feeling of making people feel sorry for them. I, um, I didn't talk to anybody about what happened to me until I started announcing it on YouTube. I have never asked for a single ounce of sympathy. I even asked my father to come with me to the police station to give my report. And he said, uh, because COVID had just hit. So he said that he would, oh, by far come and support me six feet away and sitting in his truck in the parking lot. And I went, well, then just don't fucking bother. Like you're going to sit in a parking lot, six feet away from me. What are you going to put your mask on when you come in and, and give me a hug? Or like, are, are you going to, you, are you not going to come and sit with the detectives and me and listen to me, hear me speak? Cause you don't want to know what he did to me because you think I'm a liar. Right. And my father's very immature. My father rapes me in other dimensions, which is also another reason why I believe that he can't listen to what I said about Craig, about what 
my stepfather did to me because he's too immature. He can't listen to it because he knows he rapes me in other dimensions. And if his wife, my father's wife, truly understood what my father does to me in other dimensions, she wouldn't be married to him. But she's obsessed with him because she's obsessed with the way that he looks. She dresses him up like a fucking doll. Okay, he has to stay skinny. She puts him on diets all the time. If he's too fat, she doesn't like him. She stops sleeping with him. Everything is sex. She wears a teddy every night to bed, even though she's in her fucking 60s. Okay, like she's ridiculous. She's the, the, she thinks that she's the definition definition of a woman. But actually what I think that she's a definition of is a demon. I think she's a definition of a feminine demon that tries to trap men with their pussy and keep them there in order to satisfy themselves and feed off the male. Okay. And males are usually too stupid. They see pussy for the first time and take big tits for the first time. And they're like, oh, I'll stay with her forever. She's got big tits. Yeah, of course you would. Cause you're a fucking idiot, right? Like so many fucking men are just goo goo gaga over women and they control them and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Oh my God. Look what the fuck is on the bottom of the deck. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. So we've got the magician staring straight at death. Okay. With the devil in reverse. This is what I'm talking about. So you are the magician and you stared at this transition and you said, fuck the devil. I'm not going with the devil ever again. And this actually brings me to this vivid um, contract signing that I had. And I guess my contract was up and I had to re-sign a contract. And I was in my dream and I was sitting at this fucking table and I was about to sign a contract and the devil was standing in front of me, but he wouldn't let me look at him. Right. But I could see his fucking feet. I knew who was standing in front of me. He kept telling me, sign the contract, sign the contract, sign the contract. You don't want to see the contract that's next. If you say no to this contract, then the next one's going to come in and you have to sign it. That's what he was saying. So either I signed with him or I signed with this next contract, no matter what happened. Okay. I said no to him. I threw his contract at him. He suddenly disappeared. And then the entire room filled up with like this white light. And then this being was just standing in front of me. And he just handed me a contract. And I said, fucking right, I'll sign with you. And I signed. And that was like, I don't know, man. I don't really have a concept of time anymore. I found in the last like 10 years, time is just... I don't even do a nine to five because I hate time. I don't like what it stands for. I don't like the days of the week. I don't, I think it's all Chernobyl bullshit. I think it was all just made up so then we can get into these schedules and these routines that make us forget about life and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm the unconventional witch. Okay. I don't do things like everybody else because I don't want to, I'm going to work tonight at like eight o'clock and then the next day, 11. Okay. In the morning, like I, 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 my schedule is all over the place. I don't give a fuck. I don't really need sleep anymore. So I just work whenever I can fucking work. I do this when I can do this, right? It's like, we all have to prioritize and balance ourselves, right? And when that contract comes in, you have to say to yourself, is it willing to, are you willing to sign with the devil? Because that could be the next contract that comes up, or that's the contract that you decided not to sign with. And that's why the sun is coming up because now that contract is over. I do feel like someone's contract with the devil is now over. And that's why the world came out because it's, it's, it's a matter of defeating the devil it is very easy. You just have to stop listening to him. Right. And yeah, it could take years, but eventually you will stop listening to him and he won't have those reins on you because a lot of people, the devil gets put in them by other people right? By being pedophiles, by being touched, by being abused, by being fucked around, by being hit, right? Then the devil comes into you because the devil is in the person that is hitting you, hurting you, abusing you. Okay. So the devil jumps, like, I mean, fucking watch the movie Fallen, Denzel Washington. It's my favorite movie to describe the way the devil works. Okay. He works in mysterious ways, but it ain't that mysterious. Okay. He ain't that original anymore. He's pretty fucking repetitive. And now once you, once you see the patterns, then you're like, I can beat you in any fucking level. Are you kidding? You're, you're repeating the same patterns every time. Like I realize I have this thing called social anxiety. Okay. The reason why I have social anxiety is because I took myself away from the crowd for a long time because I had to heal. The only way I could heal is with nobody around me. I couldn't have anybody around me. The only person who was around me for years was my sister. Okay. I hid in the house. Even when I was working, I, I would notice I would have these panic attacks where I'm sitting in my car waiting to go to work. I noticed social anxiety, but then I didn't realize it was social anxiety. So the devil found out I had this social anxiety and started feeding off of it. So every time I go to show up to work, I was having these anxiety attacks and I was like, okay, well, if I'm just going to keep getting attacked every time I go to work, I'm not going to go to fucking work. I'll find a job somewhere else. Are you fucking kidding me? But then seven jobs later in two fucking years, I realized I was being chased. Okay. I, I was chased by this one chick in Calgary in three different jobs. I don't even know how the fuck she found me. Then all of a sudden she was at my next job. Then all of a sudden I saw 
saw remnants of her in my next job. And then I, I was like, what the f you're fucking following me around. You're stalking me. You're stealing my jobs. It's like she was jumping in my shoes every time I left a restaurant. In she would jump. And then she wouldn't like that position. So she found the next restaurant that I was at. She jumped into my shoes so that I went to the next restaurant. Like the way that it works is fucked. But once you stop the cycle and you go, wait a second, this is social anxiety. I can cure this. It's called I'm just not going to be scared of people anymore. I'm going to be back in the world. If I'm going to be a fucking bartender, I, I need to talk to people. If I'm going to be a bar wench, okay, I got to get over my social anxiety. But it almost killed me. And it ruined multiple jobs for me. Because once the devil found out I had it, I was fucked. Right? Once he finds out about your biggest crutch, well, ah, guess what? <laughs> You're going to be leaning on it forever. Because then he pulls out your fucking limbs. And then that's all you've got is that crutch. Right? So you got to be very careful. who you sign with, what you do, and the energy that's around you, especially when something says, oh, we can make this happen for you so quickly. Oh, you'll just be on the fucking top billboards of the year in like a fucking, in like a month. Are you kidding? We'll just get you right to the top. That's like the biggest red flag ever. Nothing should, should, should happen this quickly unless it's actually lightning. Okay. Anything that's fed to you with this will happen really quick and oh, you'll get famous really quick or you're going to make, you're going to make a lot of money really quick. It's a joke. It's how this guy gets you. And I do feel like, you know, uh, to be honest is I think a lot of Capricorns have problems with money. They have problems with, um, gravitating and digging their feet into something. Right. If it doesn't look enticingly wonderful and the most constructed thing possible, that will never happen again. Right. Like I think Capricorns have a hard time um, with temptation and so shall it be. Look what they represent temptation. So it would only be justice within themselves to have to face it every day. Right. Which is why temperance is here too, because I do feel like someone's had a really hard time balancing themselves through hot and cold. Right. You might just, you might've had, you know, patterns of the past where you fucking blew up like a fucking psycho or you were overly crying like a psycho, you know, like, like not being able to balance yourself is, is really hard. So now with this two of cups that comes in with judgment, it's like, I don't know if this is a relationship that's coming in for you, or if this is just a balance of finally loving yourself and treating yourself good and kind of putting that right as, as the final ticket and being like, you know, I was already thinking to myself, there was this time where I was young and, um, I went to this like Christmas market with my mom and my Oma and I really loved my Oma. My Oma had an ice cream shop and a hotel and her, her property was like wonderland to me. Okay. I could eat all the ice cream I wanted. Um, we could just explore the hotel rooms. Like this was, this was a motel. Okay. It was called the Pine Ridge motel. It's still there, um, in Curtis in Ontario. Um, but it is run down. It is like full of prostitutes and fucking drug addicts and smack addicts. And you know, once it left my Oma's hands, it went down the hill. Okay. Really bad 20 years ago anyways. But, um, so I really loved anything I did with my Oma back in the day. She was like this jolly big fat person. She was great. And uh, so we went to this, I want to say it was a university in Toronto and they had this Christmas craft show. And I can, I, I, you know, those times when you're a kid and it's like snowing and you know, the world is so big and everything is so big. And it's like, you just see a pine tree covered in snow and you just think you're in wonderland, you know, like it's just, it's just because the perception of a child is so much different than when you're an adult, right? When you're an adult, you tend to not see a lot of those things because like you're looking after the child or you're driving your fucking car, right? It's like, you've got all these responsibilities as a, as an adult. So you, you can't take in the things that you did as a child. And then I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know what, this year, like, I want to go to things for Halloween. I want to go and do something for Christmas. And I'm like, I want to do these things again because I have to live again I have to be out in public I have to do these things because those were the memories that I have is being out and about and doing shit like jumping off fucking bridges into water with like 10 other kids you know like doing like because I feel like once you're an adult you feel like you have to drink with people 
right? Like that's the only fun you can have with people really is drinking, right? And then I realized that, man, the, the one thing that I love to do with people as an adult is play games. Because when you play games as an adult, it's so much funner than when it was when you were a kid, right? Because then you make them dirty games or funny games or, you know, not even drinking games, but you can smoke a shit ton of pot. And it's just, it's just fun to be an adult, but acting like a child at the same time right because you you you're the one that has the wallet so you're allowed to pay for whatever you want like one this one time i went to canada's wonderland and i suddenly discovered candy and i almost threw up by the end of the day i i was like 33 or something and i ate so much candy that day that i was like oh my god i finally know what this feels like to eat candy and and feel like you're gonna die right but i had to experience it because my parents never gave me the money to ever go get candy are you kidding i had to clean the entire fucking house to get a ten dollar bill back in the day a five dollar bill was probably let's be real right and my parents had money and that's the thing like i think about the money that they had together and i think like man you guys really fucking gypped us like why did we do these other things when you could have just filled up the fridge like why did we why did you spend 2 years uh you know, putting your money together to take us to Florida. And then my sister fucking has a mental breakdown and takes my stepmother's car and drives it across the country. And now suddenly she's not a part of that vacation. So we go and, and I'm with my stepbrother and my stepmother and my father who rapes me in other dimensions with my two 80 year old grandparents trying to have a good time. And I'm like, Oh, my sister should be here. Like, why, why did we do things? And it's like, Cindy just wanted to get off. Like my stepmother, wanted to get off punishing us right and like I, I remember actually physically not speaking to my dad for like I think maybe a year or so and then all of a sudden he sends me this picture of him and his wife on an arctic cruise and I was like Okay, so this motherfucker hasn't talked to me in a year and he's sending me a fucking picture with his wife on a cruise With the mountains in the background like do you think I give a fuck? Like I was having, like, that was the point of like, um, when I just realized that I was like molested as an adult, right. And, and all these memories were coming back to me from when I was a child and, and my whole life was crashing around me, but there's my dad taking selfies in, um, where was he in Alaska? Cause they went to the Alaska cruise because that's when 30, 30 below or 30 below zero or below zero, whatever that Alaska show is that like went crazy. They wanted to be able to tell all their friends that they went to Alaska. And then once they got back, Cindy was like, well, that's not what I thought it was. Yeah. Because you bought a fucking picture, you bought a show and then you went spent like, they must've spent probably like 10 grand on that trip between seven and 10 grand. And now they're having the worst money troubles ever because she fucking, she just decided she didn't want to work anymore and she wanted to take an early retirement and go run off into the country and now she can't find a job. My father can barely work. They can't make any money, but they took their early retirement and watched my sister and I go live on the streets. Oh, and then they went around and, and they told my family that we lied about being homeless. Can you believe that? Half my family didn't even know. And then once they did find out, Cindy says that it didn't really happen. She doesn't really believe us because it couldn't have really happened along with the fact that I was molested. It didn't really happen. But Whitney's just a liar. She just makes things up. Like when you survive something so bad, okay. And then, oh my God, look, I cut the deck four times and there's the Ace of Cups. I mean... There are like, I don't know how many cards in this deck, like to only cut it three times. I actually, I, I did. I only cut it three times <gasps> and I did cut to the ace of wands before too. And look at that bad boy just showed up again. Like, so there's the fourth cup, man. I'm telling you all four aces are coming in for somebody because of whatever. I just cut it again. And there's the sun. I'm going to go like this. Okay. I can't lie about this. Honestly, I really feel like, um, when somebody manipulates you, okay, and they take over you or they start living your life for you or doing something for you and and it's all run by the devil because the devil runs my stepmother, 
Okay. She doesn't have control of her body. She wouldn't act the way that she does if she had control of herself. Okay. She's been jealous of my sister and I, she's been jealous of my life since I was five. My mom used to just like starve me all the time. Um, I wasn't taken care of as a child, but she was, my stepmother was so jealous of the relationship that she thought that we had with my mom because she, her mom was some fucking dumb redneck that lived in some fucking poor ass town and bum fuck nowhere. And I'm pretty sure her dad fucking molested her. So she didn't get her mommy around all the time. So she was fucking, she was angry with my sister and I, and, and I never understood it. And then when we were, when we were grown up, she goes, well, you know, I was jealous of you. And I went, yeah, but what the fuck have you ever done about it? Cause you continue to be jealous. She's, she was jealous that my sister and I were homeless. She's jealous that I got pedophiled. She's jealous. I got abused. She's jealous of my whole life. And I'm like, what is so great about my life that you feel you have to be jealous of? I've, I, I don't have any kids. I've never been married. I've never owned a house. She's owned multiple houses. She's had multiple careers. She's had, she has a husband that loves her, that adores her. She has a son that's obsessed with her. I've got nothing. I have my sister. I have no family. My family doesn't talk to me. I've like, I think we have a cat, but I'm pretty sure that he's not going to, it's not ours. He's my landlord's. He's just here to catch rats because we have rats, not in my apartment, but they're around. And I just don't know if they're going to get into my apartment. So he gave us his cat for a little while to see if he could catch any, but there's no rats in here. So he's not catching anything, but he's now, I don't know, ours. I don't know. I have nothing. I don't even have a vehicle. And this bitch is fucking jealous of me trying to shut my life down. Doesn't believe that my dad rapes me in my dreams. Doesn't believe anything I've got to say. And honestly, as a 37 year old man, I just don't give a fuck anymore because why would I make that shit up? That's disgusting. Oh, my dad rapes me. I like to make it up and uh, put it all over YouTube for no reason. Like she's psycho. And you know, those are people that can't handle the truth. You know, when you go and you tell your parents the truth and then they call you a liar or they go and they tell your friends that you're lying. Like that's an immature parent. So always keep that in mind. People who can't listen to you or can't see the truth for what it is, because anybody who knows the truth knows that it's going to be the most fucked up thing you ever hear. Because that's the truth. It's not some sugar coated. It's always so easy to call people a liar, right? Because how is that person supposed to defend themselves? Like, how am I supposed to prove that my stepfather did that to me? Right? Like, like I, when I was talking to the detectives, they were like, okay, what do you remember? What I was three years old. They were like, do you remember what hotel? Surprisingly, I did because it was a hotel that followed me around my whole life. And I just knew something happened there, but I didn't know. You know, and like I, because they would have to go and look up records. They'd have to find his credit card records. They had to go back 30 years. And when I spoke to this detective, detective Christine, she was so nice. They actually didn't believe me at first. And then it was her partner that didn't believe me at first. And I don't think it was that they didn't believe me, but because I was a child and I didn't believe very, I didn't understand and remember as uh, very much, right. That I had to put it all together as an adult. And then when I told her partner what I really needed to say, then her partner was like, I will defend you in any court system possible. And I, I mean, he's a couple states away. So we would have had to, I mean, what we had to do. And he was 80 at that time. He was actually 82. Um, and once I told them that he was 82, they went, I don't think he's going to be able to go to jail because he's too old, which means all he would have got was house arrest. And at this point in time, he is under house arrest. He lives in Mayor Machine, New Brunswick, and he does nothing with his life. He's hated being out there from day one. So, so to be honest, my, my stepfather has gotten a lot of punishment. Okay. Especially since I've taken myself out of his life. Okay. He, he hasn't gotten, he hasn't received anything. And for the last 10 years, he's lived in a place that he's hated. So in my mind, he might as well be in jail. I don't care if he's got car keys. It doesn't matter. He's still in jail in my mind right? In my books, he's still in jail. So it's like, I don't know what is completing for Aquarius, but when the world steps in to remove the devil, it means the devil has had control of your life in some aspect and now he can't control it. So that, that devil package comes along with parents, comes along with friends, comes along with, you know, like I was, I was actually starting to kind of like, I was almost tempting to start seeing this guy. Okay. And then I realized how abusive he was over me. He just started like telling me what to do. And then he just started yelling at me. And I was like, okay, this is not the right person for me. Like I, why are you all, why are you yelling at me? Like you own me. Like he acted honestly, almost right away. Like he owned me. 
and then started showing up my, my work every day. And I was like, uh, like you gotta go, like you can't be around me anymore. Like you're starting to stalk me. Like, I don't care if we know each other. You can't show up at my work every single fucking day and not be called a stalker. Like even my regulars, like they don't even show up every day. Like what the fuck? So like, you know, the devil, like, like, you know, because the devil will slip into relationships that you're in to control you because they know that you're controllable because of what he's done the last however many years. Okay. So it seems like it's over with the cycle is over with. Cause this is the only reading I'm going to do today. This is going to take all my energy out of me guarantee. I might do one in the afternoon, but I have to go to work tonight. So I can't be working that much during the day. But all I'm saying is this is a good cycle. The fact that all four aces came out. I mean, I don't think I've ever done a reading with all four aces. I've actually done a reading per like, like for myself a couple years ago where all four aces came out and I didn't even know how to interpret the spread because at that point in time I was like, I don't even know what to say about all four aces. Uh, what do you say about all four aces? Checkmate? I don't really... That's what I heard in my head. I don't, I don't really know. Bingo? I, I don't know. Full house? That's not a full house. I don't know. Anyways. Check it. Check it. Thanks for watching Aquarius. I hope it makes sense. I know I went on quite a bit of a rant, but I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> I rant like an Aquarius. That's what we do. Um, if you want a personal reading, WhitneyMoonshine at gmail.com. If not, just enjoy the freeness of the channel. We are on TikTok, doing our TikTok things sometimes. Um, I kind of like put some stuff about my life in there too. So like, it's kind of like almost like a behind the scenes with Whitney, but not really a behind the scenes. It's not really anything that I don't show you already, but anyways, peace out. Have a good one. Namaste. And I hope it resonates. Ciao.